I absolutely love it when these watch liars expose themselves. I, I just love it. And uh, Tom did this video, The Rapture Could Be in 10 Years. And here's the end of his video, and he says some very interesting stuff. Um, he basically says everything that I've always said. That's why, that's why I'm, I'm urging anyone who gets discouraged by this stuff, by end time stuff, walk away from it and, and work on getting closer with Jesus. And I'm not saying that I'm closer to Jesus than you are, and that's why I can handle this. We're all wired different. Not everybody's... H hang on a second, Tommy. You and the rest of your cohorts, maybe you haven't said this explicitly, but J.D. Farag sure has, and he's kind of like the godfather of your movement. J.D. Farag says you have to pay attention to end times things because that is what draws us closer to the Lord. Paying attention to end times things, i.e. reading the news and speculating about how close the rapture is, that supposedly makes us purified and we, we're less likely to hold on to the world. Remember? Do you know how many of your fans yell at me and say, you love the world too much because you don't like the rapture and, or you're scared of the rapture or you don't want us to to uh, talk about the rapture because, you know, you, you love your life so much and you want us to, Satan? Haven't we heard this over and over again? Yet here's a guy, maybe he hasn't gone to the club meetings yet. He's a newbie. Like, here he is saying, hey, this, this isn't for everybody. This, this isn't for everybody. If you can't handle end time stuff then walk away because it's it could take you away from the Lord. wired to study end time stuff not everybody can handle it we're all on different levels but if it if this frustrates you and if we're here on january 1st 2023 and you're going to be super discouraged about it like i said earlier in the video please go find something else to watch please that doesn't I'm make any sense Tom. so can you imagine a minister of a, a real minister saying this about any other subject you know, if you can't handle uh, the things I'm telling you out of the Word of God today, if you can't handle them, they frustrate you, scare you, whatever, then just walk away. Don't listen to me anymore. Can you imagine the Apostle Paul telling Timothy, you know, as you're preaching in the churches, and it, it, just don't forget, if people get frustrated and, and, and uh, discouraged by what you say, you know, make sure you tell them to walk away and not listen anymore because, you know, you might lead them away from the Lord. Can you imagine that? Of course not. That's that's ridiculous. You know why? Because what Tom does is not minister work. It's entertainment. He's telling you straight up here that what I do is really just for fun. And if you can't handle the fun, if you can't handle the ride, get off the ride. I don't want this ride to take you away from the you Lord. Have a good walk with the Lord, which is my number one agenda, is pushing people to Jesus Christ. And no, knowing it's of not. His finished work and his atoning blood. That's my main agenda. That's number one. No, it's not, Tom. Your number one thing is to attract their attention through your your rapture soon, rapture any second grabber headlines that are clickbait to get more people to watch you because you know there's a big audience out there of people who like to think about this stuff all the time. So I I know what you're about, man. I've been around. I know what you're about. And I also know, because your wife told everybody, that you make all the money in the family now. She doesn't do anything else for money. She's a homemaker. You make the money. She said that because of your quote-unquote God channel or your channel about God. So, so no, Tom, stop it. We all know what you're about. You're about getting people into your channel through rapture hype and fear porn and then easing their easing their fears by claiming that you know the rapture soon because this is all stuff from Jesus he told us so you're using God's name and then it doesn't happen and you know it's not going to happen it probably won't happen so now you're diffusing the bomb and trying to lie your way out of it in in advance well i never said this is i guarantee you this is what this guy's going to say on january 1st like i said i never promised this i never said i was a prophet I, told, I didn't tell you it was going to be January 1st for sure. I, I told you long ago, I've said it a million times, that God didn't give me that date, okay? So just to calm down, everybody. Tom, you're a liar. You're a liar, okay? You're not about the gospel of Jesus Christ because you preach a false gospel. You lie and tell the world there's a rapture going to come any second and then a tribulation that they're going to have to endure and they need to get out of that tribulation by believing in Jesus. That's a lie. That is a satanic lie from the pit of hell. That is not the gospel. The gospel is about 
you're, you're a sinner apart from God, the Father, and you need to believe in Jesus Christ today, whatever your circumstances are. It doesn't matter what the world is like. I don't care if you're the richest guy in Connecticut and you have a house on the river and, and gas is 99 cents and there's no war in the world. You are lost. There is no seven-year tribulation to come. You need to get saved today because you don't know that tomorrow you're still going to be breathing. And you will face God someday and give an account. And if Jesus Christ has not paid the price for your sins because you believed on him when you were on earth, you are destined for hell. Eternal punishment. Not some seven-year thing. Eternal punishment. Does Tom talk like that on his channel? No. Tom, Tom assures you bad stuff's just going to get worse. That's good for us, though. It's good for us Christians. Hey, man, join the club. Get on the ark. That'll save you. You don't want what's coming. You don't want this seven years of hell. On. Never talks about eternal hell. Talks about seven years of hell. And then it's end time signs and telling people we're on the cusp of the rapture. But number one is Jesus. And this should be number one in all of us. You know, if the rapture is more important, if getting out of here is more important to you than your daily walk with Jesus, reevaluate. Yeah, see, and then finally he just proves what I've said all along. This is escapism. This is escaping today's trouble. The trouble that Tom is having right now, bankrupt, his wife's businesses have failed, he's forced to, to, to build fake ministry channels so he can get some donations and keep paying the bills. And he's scared because look at the world around us. We might, we might be starving by this time next summer. And... And and, th and the rapture is going to give us our escape. We're out of here. I thought the rapture was escape from seven years of tribulation. That's what I thought it was about. That's what you guys keep telling us whenever we say, well, show me in the, ra in the Bible where the rapture is. Where's that? Oh, it's before this tribulation. It's before the tribulation. It's our blessed hope because we're out of here before the tribulation. Blah, 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 blah. Is the blessed hope that you claim is the rapture the hope that will escape seven years of tribulation or not? If it's about seven years of tribulation, what do you keep talking about getting out of here now? We're not in the tribulation, are we? But do you see how they spin it around to like, you know what people really care about is right here and right now. They care about their pain and suffering today. Even though the Bible says clearly in multiple places that tribulation is good for us and works patience in the Christian. Oh, who cares about all that stuff? People want out of here. Wow, just just wow. very revealing, is it not? Okay. If you get so discouraged that we're not out of here yet, that it affects your relationship with the Lord, reevaluate. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. Again, I thought it was the blessed hope and we were supposed to constantly be thinking about it because that's the only way we detach ourselves from the world. It's the only way we can be in the remnant. Jan Markell has defiantly divided the body of Christ, or attempted to divide the body of Christ and the people who worship the rapture and everybody else. And those who worship the rapture and at the expense of every other thought, they're the remnant. And the rest of us people that say we're Christians, yeah, we're probably really not Christians. We're not very good Christians because we don't, we don't obsess about the rapture every day. Here's one of their own. He's a newbie, I guess. I don't know. He hasn't like I said, he hasn't gotten into the club. He hasn't gone to the club meetings to get properly trained. What are you doing, Tom? Do you realize all the other guys are saying the exact opposite of you? I mean, that's that's great because every once in a while, guess what happens? The hole these guys dig for themselves starts to collapse on them, and they have to tell the truth because no one can deny that the man is still sitting by the river in his car. He's not in heaven like he promised.